What if I told you a tiny insect, often crushed underfoot or sprayed out of existence, is now helping build a billion-dollar empire in China? Grasshoppers. Yes, those noisy jumpers that destroy crops. China has turned them into a booming business, while most countries still see them as pests. Every year, China raises around 500 million grasshoppers, not to get rid of them, but to feed a growing global appetite. This is not a science fiction story. This is real. Let's dive into China's bold new farming experiment and see how the world's most unwanted insect became its tastiest and most profitable. The start of something unexpected. China once struggled with swarms of grasshoppers destroying fields. Instead of using chemicals or mass extermination, farmers and scientists came up with something different. Why fight them when you can raise them? The plan was simple. Collect the grasshoppers, keep them in large mesh-covered enclosures, and let them breed under controlled conditions. Every year, around 500 million grasshoppers are bred in these farms. That's not a small number. That's more than the population of the United States. These bugs are now raised like poultry, carefully managed, closely monitored, and harvested at the perfect moment. grasshoppers are bred. The process starts when farmers release the grasshoppers into large covered pens. These are specially designed spaces with controlled soil and climate. Inside, the grasshoppers are left to mate naturally. Females begin laying eggs in the soil within 30 to 35 days. They use a special part of their body called an ovipositor to dig tiny holes and bury the eggs safely. The eggs are then collected, counted, and transferred to new enclosures to make sure growth stays even. The goal is to keep everything balanced. If the bugs grow too fast or too unevenly, it affects the whole cycle. So, breeders divide them into sections based on age and stage. This way the growth remains consistent, and large quantities can be raised in small spaces. Feeding and growing the perfect insect. Grasshoppers grow fast, but only if they eat right. These little jumpers are surprisingly hungry. Their diet is packed with nutrients, mostly plants and grains, to support the growth of new skin and body parts. Every time they shed their old skin, a process called molting, they need extra nutrition. That's why feeding schedules are strict. Farmers know exactly what to give and when. Thanks to their fast digestion and strong metabolism, grasshoppers reach full adult size in only a few weeks. In that short time, they go through multiple stages of development, growing bigger, stronger, and more valuable with each step. Harvesting the golden bug, timing, is everything in grasshopper farming. Farmers harvest them when they reach around four to six centimeters in length. At this point, their bodies feel firm, their wings are fully formed, and their value peaks. The best time to collect them is in the evening. Why? Because grasshoppers settle down at night. They cling to the walls or nets inside the enclosure, making it easier for workers to gather them quickly without needing much force. This method also keeps the bugs in good shape. No damage, no stress, just clean harvesting. The insects are then sorted, cleaned, and either sold fresh or processed into snacks, meals, and even powders. Grasshoppers on the menu. In many parts of China and Southeast Asia, grasshoppers are no longer considered strange food. They've become a common item in both street markets and restaurants. Some people eat them as snacks, 
others use them in meals. They can be deep fried until crispy, tossed with lime leaves, roasted with salt, or stir fried with spicy herbs. Chefs create dishes that match local flavor preferences and customers eat them like popcorn or peanuts. It's not only about taste, it's about health and sustainability. Grasshoppers are high in protein and easy to digest. They have fewer fats compared to red meat and need far less water and space than cows or chickens. In a world dealing with food shortages and climate stress, bugs like these offer an answer. alone, frog farms produced over 2.5 million tons of frogs. That's 75% of the global supply. Once seen as a niche idea, frog farming is now booming. It brings in serious income, supports rural jobs, and even changes how people cook and eat around the world. In this video, we'll take you on a journey inside real frog farms. We'll show you how frogs are bred, raised, harvested, and turned into a high-value food. Let's dive right into the world of frog farming. tank setup. The rearing tanks are lined with strong plastic sheets. These hold water, stop leaks, and make cleaning easier. Above each tank, you'll see mesh or nylon netting. This keeps frogs from jumping out, blocks predators like birds, and reduces harsh sunlight. Too much sun can heat the water or stress the frogs, so controlling light is important. Farms check and change the water regularly. Clean water means healthy frogs. Harvest time, how frogs are collected. Once frogs grow big enough, it's harvest time. Farmers use large nets to gather them into one area inside the tank. This makes things calm and manageable. Frogs are then picked up by hand using mesh bags. These bags let water drain and keep air flowing, so the frogs don't run out of oxygen during collection. Everything is done quickly but carefully to reduce panic or harm.
makes frog farming sustainable? Frog farming uses fewer resources compared to traditional livestock. Frogs need less space, water, and food than pigs or cattle. Their growth cycle is also much shorter, meaning farmers can raise and sell multiple batches each year. That leads to faster returns and fewer environmental pressures. Plus, frogs help control insect populations in their natural habitats by farming them in controlled environments. We reduce pressure on wild frog species and help balance ecosystems. Many modern frog farms follow eco-friendly practices, such as reusing water through filtration systems and using organic feed sources. This makes frog farming not only profitable, but also sustainable. valuable part of the frog. The frog's hind legs are the star of the show. They're packed with firm muscle and very little fat. That's why they're in high demand in restaurants and food markets. Chefs love them because they cook evenly, stay juicy, and work with a wide range of flavors. Frogs in the kitchen, from farm to plate. Frog meat has been part of traditional cooking for years, but now it's stepping into modern menus worldwide. You can grill it, Fry it, boil it, or cook it in spicy sauces. It blends well with herbs, garlic, butter, or chili, giving chefs a lot of freedom. It's often served with steamed rice or as a snack with drinks, depending on the region. The future of frog meat. The global appetite for frog meat is growing fast. Countries in Asia, Europe, and even the US are showing increasing interest in frog-based dishes. As people seek healthier, leaner meat alternatives, frog legs offer high protein, low fat, and a unique texture that stands out on any plate. Food companies are starting to invest in large-scale frog farming with better tools, automated feeding systems, and stricter hygiene controls. This opens the door for frog meat to reach supermarkets, not just specialty restaurants. What began in rice fields and village ponds is now becoming a serious player in the food industry.